is John Perry, and today I'll be represent I'll be presenting William Randolph and the Air Force Base. He was named after appropriately Randolph Air Force Base. So these terms might not be familiar, with, which is understandable if you're not interested in military history. However, you there's still a chance you might have heard of it, even if you weren't, because at one point or another, due to the fact that pretty well known, pretty big, chances are you probably have an older sibling, cousin, maybe just a friend, or perhaps parents, aunts, or uncles who worked there either as an employee or as an official airman. So how did we get to this point? Hopefully you'll be hopefully you'll understand by the end of this presentation. So where did we all start? William Randolph was born in eighteen ninety three as a native citizen of Austin, Texas. Beautiful city. So during his time, you would probably believe that he had this dream of becoming an Air Force pilot from the very young age, since he was quite skilled at it. However, that wasn't really the case, because while it was a dream of his, he didn't, it took a while to get there due to the fact that people just didn't know about air travel back, in, back during that time period. It was a very new, foreign, elusive concept, not to mention word didn't travel very quickly since... Nowadays, we have internet, so if something new occurs, changes are, we're going to hear about it in the next couple of days, or even in hours, really. But since newspapers were then, it took weeks, months, even years for word to properly travel. Not very efficient. However, despite that, he did, he did have an interest in the military. As we can see, in 1910, he attended agriculture and mechanical College of Texas, or as we know it, good old A&M, right? Six years later, he graduated and joined the military. However, like I said, still no Air Force ba Air Force branch quite yet. He was he said joined the um, how would I describe it? Just like the basic Army infantry kind of, you know, like a foot soldier. However, he was quite skilled at that too, considering he became a lieutenant in 1916. This, however wasn't good enough for him, and that's when he transitioned to the Air Force branch, as we know. So during this time, he, in 1917, like I said a year later, he was training in the Kelly State of Aeronautics, right? And two years later, he finally graduated and earned his wings. And then, so, which means he became, he was granted the official title as a pilot. And in 1920, even more impressively, he was promoted to captain. Like I said, this might not seem like much if you're not interested in military history. However, being a captain is a very high position. The fact that he got that just like a year after he graduated is very commendable, to say the least. And during this nine-year period, he accomplished many feats, very well-known, very well-respected by his colleagues. Unfortunately, however, it just couldn't last because during 1928, that's when just as very faint idea of trying to build a new Air Force base just east of San Antonio. And since William Malik and Randolph was such an accomplished individual, they decided he should name it. And unfortunately, however, he did not have the time or he wasn't able to reach a proper name, at least that we've heard of. He might have, but if so, it's private or buried information. The reason why is, like I mentioned, we had limitations of technology so it's very unlikely we could have reached what he had in mind. Not to mention, on a more tragic note, he was taking off in his AT-4 and unfortunately crashed during that period, and he died in the accident, leaving his wife and children. Not only were they depressed, but his friends and fellow soldiers were also very saddened by what had happened. Since he couldn't name it, they decided to name it in his honor, and that's how we have the Randolph Air Force Base, which to this day is still a very impressive Air Force Base. Like it has grown to like one of the largest assembly. It holds like more planes than almost anything else we know of. That's it for today's speech.